All right, we're going to tear into this pump, uh, find out exactly um, if this play is normal. And you can see that there's a little bit of slop side to side. And that may be normal too, or it may be abnormal. I think that there's another snap ring that goes inside of here. So once we take this off, which will entail taking off this ring gear and then pulling the spring the clip, We'll be able to pull this cover off and then see what's inside. Alright, the first step we want to do in taking off this gear in this case cover, we're going to take off this small little snap ring. And for that we're going to use our cheap little Pittsburgh snap ring pliers. Okay, we got our snap ring off. We then pulled off the gear It came off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this larger snap ring. For that, I'm going to use this tool, the Nipex, part number 4811J3. You can see that. I bought this on Amazon and it is a finely crafted tool for removing any stubborn clamps. Just squeeze together, comes right out, down on the paper towel, release it slowly so it won't spring away, and there it is. Next thing we'll do is start removing this cover. Remove is this washer. All right, so I cleaned up all this old gasket material. I'll order a new gasket. And uh, next, what we're going to be doing is using this uh, quarter inch hex bit. I'll drop right in here. We'll be taking these two bolts out, and uh, then we should be able to separate uh, this piece here. Okay, so we've taken off the pump cover. Uh, that looks okay. Don't see anything in there that that I shouldn't. Um, it's important to keep these ball bearings all together, so I've zip tied them. Uh, each one of these ball bearings, large ball bearings, is mated to the to the surface to the hole. So they're all different. You can't you can't interchange these. It's not like they fall out and then you just uh, put them back wherever they go. So this piece can come should come out. There we go. And I'm going to set this aside. I already have a new gasket to replace that. The um, the issue here that I'm immediately noticing is corrosion. And this is all supposed to be immersed in oil, obviously. But if oil has water in it, and I did change this when I first, when I went through the restoration, but I never opened up the, the pump and the transmission. So I can obviously see that uh, there are signs of corrosion that uh, should not be present, unless this was all prior to it being uh, put together at the factory but I don't believe so because I'm seeing where the gasket was there's corrosion here there's some corrosion inside inside the well where the gasket sits so we're gonna clean that all out you can see some corrosion here and oxidation there so obviously water was getting in to the system and that's not um, just a, that's a failure of the gasket but that is something that uh, should be concerning, so we're going to clean this all up. Just want to show you the first thing that I thought of um, that there may be water seeping in was this um, hex came out perfectly fine. This one did not, it was rusted. And um, you can see that there is some, I don't have the tele zoom on, but you can see that there's some rust in those threads. So water was seeping down past the head here. And uh, that was that was over here, and that was causing that to leak down past the seal. 
<coughs> which I believe is the reason why I have all this rust here. So we're going to be pulling this top off. And again, i got to be careful because there should be some... Yep, see these ball bearings here? i got to watch that. Alright, I'm going to need another hand here, so I'll put you down and uh, come back to this. Alright, next is the uh, race in here. You see how this turns on top. And it pivots. Changes the flow, I assume. And so this comes out. I don't want to... Oops, I lost my... Lost my little paper towel here. It's a windy day today. Okay, we're going to take this out. Should slide right out. See the way that that goes. The flat part goes down. And we lost one of the pins there. And I lost my paper towel. So let me put you down again. Well, due to some windy conditions outside in the garage, I decided uh, to keep things as free of contamination as possible. And um, what prompted me to take this apart initially was this is the shaft. You can see the, the keyway there. There are the two snap rings, and then it goes into this housing. And this will sit on the tractor like this and of course um, this part would actually be facing this direction here's the speed controller here at the top and um, the issue that I was running into was a lot of play I was getting here so I'm going to inspect this bushing and see if there's any issues with this bushing. I'm looking at the surface and I'm seeing a little bit of shine but as I rub my finger over this it's very smooth there's nothing abrasive uh, just normal wear and uh, yeah it's in really good really good shape so I'm thinking that that play is normal that's in there which would lead me to believe that there must be still something wrong with the way I'm putting things together. But I'm really glad that I did take this apart because I'm very surprised to see the level of corrosion that is on some of these pieces that I'll need to clean up. And as I remove this, uh, this one is in much better shape as it is. You, it's, it has more lubrication going through it. But as I take it off, I can see at this plate here has a lot of uh, light surface rust and it shouldn't be that way as it's immersed in oil and underneath uh, the same the same holds true so we know that water has gotten in and that's definitely a problem good news uh, gears look okay pinion gears ball bearing spins wonderfully I mean it's in great shape However, I do have to watch out here for this uh, seal. I gotta clean that up. I have a new O-ring um, to go inside as well. But everything's turning freely, which is good. But I'm glad I took it apart because there could be significant, uh, you know, without taking it apart and actually seeing what's going on, I, I might have had, and I've changed the fluid, and I've changed the filter, but um, you know, there's, there's water, there was water in this because I know before the restoration it was, it was definitely left outside. Here is the um, impeller I was talking about with those uh, little round, I'll call them ball bearings, but they're little plugs. And this is, um, you know, this thing spins around in the charge housing, uh, pump charger housing. And it doesn't spin cylindrically. It, it's got like an, an oval to it, which is what creates the the uh, suction, if you'll call it that, um, and, and draws the fluid. So I'm going to inspect this again. This is my new seal. I'm going to make sure that this is put on correctly, and there's no issues with that, as well as my pump plate. 
So uh, just taking a video here of what this pump looks like. This is an Eaton 1100 um, unit. It's uh, off a of Wheel Horse 520. Many of these were used on the uh, 400 series as well. Um, but check your model. Uh, not a lot of components in it, but a uh, very powerful pump. Even though it's they call it light uh, light duty, light duty in this application. But it, for a garden tractor, is um, is pretty heavy duty. So we're going to put this back together in the next video, uh, clean up some of these parts, and wanted to thank everybody for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.